God is good. All the time. All the time, God is good. Mm -hmm. Good to see the representation from various congregations here this afternoon. I see Brother Peter Horn from Austin yes, Road. And yes, we got Brother Walker from the Northside yes, Congregation sir. here in mm -hmm. Rochester, New York. And I see representation from various congregations. But now it's preaching time. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's preaching time now. And I tell you that Brother Walker is tearing the house up this morning. Talking about worshiping while in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Yes, sir. I don't know what he's going to do tonight, but if he never say another word, what he did this morning was more than enough. Yes, sir. So y'all know we're still in flight. We had a little turbulence this morning. Oh, yeah. But uh, the co pilot, Dr. Watkins, told me he's been talking to the captain, Jesus. And Jesus has assured us that if we stay fast, we might experience a little turbulence, but he has guaranteed to land us safely. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to turn it over to the co-captain, all the way from Hartford, Connecticut, that great, powerful evangelist, Brother Marcus Watkins from the Northside Congregation. Yeah. He didn't bring any theme music, mm. but he brought 50 plus members with him. All right, isn't that wonderful? All right, we're gonna, we're gonna have a verse of another song. And the next voice you hear after that verse will be Marcus Watkins, minister for the North Side, Church of Christ, and Hartford, Connecticut. Amen. Amen. As I journey through this land and singing, as I go, I will be pointing mm -hmm. souls to Calvary, mm -hmm. to the crimson flow. May I repair my soul from without, within. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Isn't it good when we just come to worship God? Yes. Amen, somebody. I'm just thankful to be here. I'm thankful uh, to be at the North Greece Road Church of Christ with my good friend, Brother Jerry Houston, uh, and the fine saints here. We, we've had a long-standing relationship, and I'm thankful uh, that we're continuing that relationship, not just with me, but also the members from the Northside Church of Christ in Hartford, Connecticut. And we, uh, and I am, I'm just humble that so many of them uh, uh, followed me to hear, as I told them, something that they hear all the time. Uh, it is all an experience. It's all an experience. And I'm thankful because they didn't have to do it. Uh, and I want to encourage, I always say that a going church is a growing church. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. If you don't go, you won't grow. Because we only see things through the paradigm of this little four cornered wall that we live in. Sometimes you got to see how other brothers and sisters are worshiping and doing things. We, 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 we got so many ideas from coming by, giving the t get one on the tour. We got so many ideas. We ain't gonna look the same when we get back. Hey, amen. Mm -hmm. We lost our mind. Hey, amen. I mean, you, you have a wonderful facility, and it's good when we can encourage one another and provoke one another to love and good work. So I'm just thankful uh, to my Northside family for uh, traveling this way. Uh, and we have a long way to go back home, and I won't be long on this evening. Plus, uh, many have eaten, and, and, and some of them are asleep already. Mm. Amen. Amen. The, uh, the, the heat and AC guy came out of the building uh, another week, and he said there was a pipe loose, and he said, you know, there's carbon monoxide that leaks in the building. I, 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 I was wondering why folks sleep. I don't preach it. knocked out. He said, no, it wasn't a carbon monoxide. Amen. Amen. But, but it's just good to be in the house of God. I just want to share something with you. Northside has heard this before, but it's like a song. Uh, you can sing it over and over, but it never sounds the same the second time around. If I can bother you one more time, stand on your feet. We're almost ready to land this plane. Stand on your feet. Genesis chapter 37. I don't have time to read all of it, but I will give you uh, the crux of the text. Genesis chapter 37. Look at verses 9, 10, and 11. Just take these few verses and then I will explain the story and we'll be on our way. If you have it, signify by saying amen. amen. Speaking of Joseph, the Bible says in Genesis 37, verse 9, and he dreamed yet another dream. He told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. Behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeyance to me. He told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I, thy mother and thy brethren, indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? And his brothers envied him. But his father observed the same. You may be seated. We're just reading your hearing the 37th chapter of the book of Genesis. This is a story, of course, where Joseph, he has a dream. Tells the dream to his brothers and his brothers began to envy and hate him. He has yet another dream. He goes back and tells it not only to his brothers, but also to his father. And you know the story how the brothers were working one day and Joseph is going out to meet them and they said, behold, here comes the dreamer. One of the brothers said, well, let's kill him. However, one thought better, let us not kill him, but let us cast him in a pit. You know the story that Joseph was cast down into a pit and he was sold into slavery. Where well, I want to pick the story up is where Joseph was cast down down into a pit and speak to you briefly from the subject when you're down to nothing God is up to something mm -hmm. when you're down to nothing God is up to something Joseph was a dreamer who could not keep his dreams to himself in between the verses we've heard and we've read and we come to understand that Joseph tells a dream that he has in which he and his family out in the wheat fields and 
they have to bow down to him. Jacob, Joseph's father, tells him and almost rebukes him for this dream. And his brothers envied and hated him in verse 11. And isn't it strange how some people can hate on your dream? How some people can hate on you because you want to do better. You have big dreams of doing better than you're doing right now. Isn't it strange how people have a problem with your dream? Because your dream does not take anything away from their dream. It has always amazed me how people can hate on someone else who's wanting to do better and wanting to achieve things in life, wanting to step out from the shadows of somebody else. God blessing me does not take anything away from you. Mm -hmm. What we have to learn how to do as brothers and sisters in Christ is learn how to celebrate one with another. Learn how to celebrate someone else's dreams and mm -hmm. accomplishments and achievements. But this was not the state of affairs with Joseph's brothers. For the more Joseph dreamed, the more they hated him. Mm -hmm. They hated him so that they sold him into slavery. You know how Joseph went from one thing in life to another. He was cast down into a pit. He was thrown into prison. He worked for Potiphar. But the end of the story is this, that Joseph was second in command of the, the secretary of agriculture. And the end of the story, if we can jump to the end, Joseph, after he met his brothers, he said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. All in right. other words, let me give you the, pre the prequel before I give you the sequel. Joseph is saying, when I was down to nothing, God was up to something. When I was down and in prison, God was up to something. When I was cast into a pit, God was up to something. And I stop by to tell you before I leave Rochester this evening, when you're down to nothing, God may be up to something. Mm -hmm. And nothing sometimes is right where God needs you to be because God needs to put you in a pit sometimes so that you know that when you got out of the pit, Optimistic, hope filled, forward thinking dreamers sometimes end up in a pit. Mm -hmm. It does not matter who you are or how bright or cheery you are, there are times in your life when everything seems to crash in on you. You lose loved ones, things get complicated in your family relationship, things change at work or at church, financial problems develop, you deal with unexpected losses, someone has an unkind word for you, your grown children are acting like little children, your friends are acting strange, there are hundreds of things that can put us in a pit and pull us down, but what you need to start doing is looking up to God because if God brought you through it, he can certainly bring you through it. You need to learn how to be optimistic even when you're in the pits of life. And like Joseph, we need to, we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. And as long as I know that God has everything under control, I can worship him anyhow, even if I'm in a pit. Mm -hmm. We know the giver of all good dreams. We we know, the, we know God, the one who provides for us. We know God, the one who has taken care of us. So when you're down to nothing, don't whine, don't pine, don't pout, and don't cry. When you're down to nothing, God may be up to something. Mm -hmm. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Mm. No matter where you are or what you're facing, you're just in the middle of your story. See, Joseph was just in the middle of his story, but the conclusion had not been written yet. Mm. You got to look into this unknown future so there may be giants, there may be pits, but I'm trusting God, the one who holds the future. All through the Bible, it's literally in line with individuals who are down to nothing.
nothing, but God was apparently up to something. Call Job to the witness stand and he'll tell you I lost everything. Yeah. Job lost his livestock, his wealth, his children. He lost everything but his wife. And then finally she walked out on him. He was down to nothing, sitting on a dung heap, oozing sores all over his body. But when God was up to something, God's faith in Job and Job's faith in God defeated Satan in a classic spiritual battle. The result is God gave Job double for his trouble. He got a double for blessing of what he lost. Why? Because when Job was down to nothing, God was up to something. Call Gideon to the witness stand and Gideon will tell you that I lost my confidence. The Midianites had defeated me and ravished the land. Gideon will tell you they was threshing wheat in a wine press, hiding from the Midianites. He'd reached the bottom of the barrel. He was down to nothing, but God told him to choose him from mighty men of valley, defeat the Gideonites, and when Gideon was down to nothing, God was up to something. Mm -hmm. Call King David to the witness, and he'll tell you, even though I was a man after God's own heart, Saul was trying to kill me. My son had turned his back on me. I was a fugitive at the bottom of the barrel, but God was up to something. Saul tried to take me out. When you're down to nothing, God is up to something. Call Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego to the witness stand. And they'll tell you, even if you're cast into a fiery furnace and your life is about to be ruined and you're about to be burned up, as long as you trust God, he's up to something. And the same thing that cast in, and we cast in three, but I see four now. The son of man, when you're down to nothing, God is up to something. Mm -hmm. So, for those who feel like you're down to nothing, let me tell you, God may be up to something. When you feel like there's nothing else to hold on to, God may be working it out behind the scenes. You just got to stay for the rest of the story. Don't quit in the middle of the book. Don't walk out in the middle of the show. And don't leave before the game is over. Because God may be just getting started. Mm -hmm. It's halftime. The game is not over. Peter will tell you when you're down to nothing. After you deny, after he denied Christ three times. He was a miserable failure. He was at the bottom. But God was up to something. Jesus met Peter on the shore side of Lake Galilee and restored Peter's confidence, restored Peter's faith and restored his position in the kingdom. The result is he preached the first sermon on the day of Pentecost. 3,000 were baptized. Peter would tell you when, he, that when you're down to nothing, God is up to something. Paul and Silas would tell you that we were severely flogged and thrown into prison, cast for casting out demonic spirits. They'll tell you when you're down to nothing, when you're down in a dark, dingy, that damn prison and dungeon. But at midnight, we began to sing and pray and pray and sing and sing and pray and God sent an earthquake and the jailhouse doors came open and we walked out without being hung. Paul and Silas would tell you when you're down to nothing, God is up to something. John, who was an exile on the Isle of Patmos, and he will tell you that when you're down to nothing, God is up to something, so much so you can still say, even when you're by yourself, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. See, as long as you're in the spirit, when God calls, you can be down to nothing, but God is up to something, and if you let God take control and charge of your life, even when you feel like you have no energy and no strength, God is up to something wonderful in your life. So you may not be, your story may not be the story of Joseph, Paul, Peter, and John. But all of us have a story. All of us have a story. That when we were down to nothing, God stepped in right on time and made everything all right. Hey. You thought you wouldn't find a suitable job, he stepped in right on time. When you felt like healing couldn't come your way, he stepped in right on time. When your confidence was at its lowest point, he stepped in right on time. 
Mm -hmm. We wasn't motivated to even get up in the morning. We closed the curtains and turned on the lights off. He stepped in at the right on time. Restored your faith and healed your body. Healed your fractured relationships. Restored your dreams. He stepped in at the right on time. When you're down to nothing, God may be up to something. Mm -hmm. You ought to put yourself in God's hands. Because there are no hands like God's hands. Mm -hmm. Joseph put his life in the hands of God. And God made it better in the end than it was in the beginning. God has some mighty hands. Hands that can take nothing and turn it into something. God's hand took something and turned it into everything. The same hands took silicon and oxygen and made dirt, took dirt and made dust. God's hands took dust and made man, took man and made woman, took man and woman and put man and woman together and made all men. God has some powerful hands. The hand of God took helium and oxygen and made the sun and took sun and made light, took light and made heat, took heat and made energy. And the Lord has some mighty hands. He took angel sperm and made a seed a seed and made a sprout, took a sprout and made a bush, took a bush and made a brush, took a brush and made a tree and took a tree and made some wood, took some wood and made a cross, took a cross and made an altar, sent his son and sacrificed himself on the altar. God's hands are the best hands of men because Jesus died for our sins on that old rugged cross. See, when you put yourself in God's hands, everything is all right. So when you're down to nothing, God may be up to something. When your life is purpose and ordained by God, he's up to something. Mm -hmm. Just keep your focus on where you're going and not where you are. Yes. You have to have spiritual tunnel vision mm -hmm. that you're so focused on your goal mm -hmm. that peripherally mm -hmm. nothing distracts you. Mm -hmm. You got to keep moving yes. to where God wants you to be. Yes, sir. Because every time you stop, you delay getting to your destination. Every time you stop to deal with something, Every time you pull over to deal with something, you're delaying where God wants you to be. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to stay focused yes. and stay committed yes. to getting to the finish line. Let God lead you and whatever happens outside of you, you trust God to take care of it. Because if God is leading you, he's already cleared the path for you. You just got to follow the way that God wants you to go. Many times as, as Christians, let's say this as we get ready to go. <laughs> we become so distracted by things that we no longer pay attention to what's really important. What's important or should be important to you and I as Christians is being conformed in the image of Christ. Mm. Period. Whatever that means, whatever it takes to be conformed in that, it, to look like Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And the more we look like Christ, the more we focus on God. Mm. And the more you focus on God, watch this, the less you hear, the less you see. Now I saw a moment come and say, bro, why did you see? I didn't see it. Bro, why did you? I didn't hear nothing. I mean, what? Hear what? You mean you ain't hear? I'm I didn't hear it. Why? Because I'm so focused mm -hmm. on trying to get to where I need to be. Because if I become distracted, then I begin putting out campfires when the forest is burning down around me. You have to become so focused on where God wants you to be that that's all you see you wake up thinking about and praying. 
God. God, protect me today so I can do your will, God. Help me today so I can stay focused on what you want me to focus on. That's why your every aspect of your life needs to be focused on becoming and doing and being what God has called for you to be. Mm -hmm. We live beneath our spiritual privileges and it is beyond me. How we as children of God, Christians, an apple of God, I made in God's own image. While we as Christians are walking around sad, depressed, despondent, head held down. Like, listen, I'm a child of a king. I don't walk around with my head held down. Mm -hmm. Like I have no power. I have all power because I am connected to God. Yes. Jesus has all power. Jesus doesn't just have some power. He has all power. You heard a we. You know how those magicians every now and then, there'll be a renegade magician that show you how tricks are done. How they saw somebody in half, and they really don't saw him in half, but he has to put a mask on so they don't know who he is. Well, let, let me take you behind the preaching veil. I want to share something with you that you may not know. But you can't tell nobody. Mm -hmm. Preachers, we're human. Shh, Let me tell you, and them snitches over there. See, one from snitches gets stitches. Preachers, we're human.
that folk all the time. Now you better be careful what you say about me. Yes. Amen, amen. I tell my children, I know y'all say some stuff about me. And I better not hear you. Mm-hmm. And you know, when we were growing up, we get in trouble, go down our room, and we sat in our room, and all of a sudden our mama, grandmama, dad, whatever. What you say? What you say? That is a place full. They got a microphone. <laughs> and see, because we're human, mm -hmm. because what you see on Sunday, that is not the totality of our life. No. Mondays come. Mm -hmm. We got to take our garbage out like you take your garbage out. Mm -hmm. Let me share this. I'm going to go. Maybe this is why God called me here this weekend. Let me share this with you. And that's not about Houston or, or me or anybody else. But as the church grows, as it did in the first century, mm -hmm. Problems come. That's just Man. the way it is. But let me share something with you. Before I came to Connecticut, been there seven months or so, I come to a point in my life. Ministry going well. Having lunch with the mayor, the governor, President Barack Obama sent a team of eight people down from the White House, from the Department of uh, uh, Health and Human Services to see our programs, everything's going good. Mm -hmm. Five million dollar grant. Everybody was happy but me. See, y'all don't want, y'all don't want, y'all don't want real preaching. <laughs> and I went through a state of depression because it's strange for things to be going well, but you're still not feeling good. So I'm like, is something wrong with me? Because how can everybody have joy? And I'm giving them joy, preaching to them, hey man, da, 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 da. and then I go to my office hmm. and cry. Everybody leaves the building. I circle the building, come back and sit down. Mm. So I came to this morning and I asked God this. Come, what do you do when it's not enjoyable being you I don't know if y'all ready. What do you do when it's no longer fun being you? Mm. It's not about the Bible because you read the Bible. It's, 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 it's everything seems it's going, but there is no joy. You lost the joy. Mm-hmm. You look in the mirror and you're disgusted. Yeah. See, somebody know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You wake up, you slept eight hours, but you're still tired. Mm. You come home from sitting behind the desk, you sit down and you're drained. Mm -hmm. You want to get up and get something to eat, you, sit, you can't find anything. Life when it's not enjoyable anymore. What do you do when it seems like it's just a burden mm. just to get up off your couch? Yes. Just to get come to your house, just to go to your job, just to talk to your children, just to talk to your husband, just to talk to your wife, just to talk to your friends. People are calling you and I answer their call. What do you do as a child of God mm -hmm. when it's no longer enjoyable being who you are? Right. And I heard what David said. David prayed to God. 
that God may restore his joy. Mm. The joy of life can leave you even as a child of God. We go through so many tasks in life that we forget that our lives should be consumed with looking like Christ instead of all of this other stuff and we forget the joy that we had when we first met God. David said, restore my joy to me again. And when I came to understand that, I asked God to restore my joy, even if you have to take me all the way back to where I was to appreciate what I got right now. Just let me have some joy. It ain't about money, house, car, clothes. Just give me some joy. Yes. If you don't have joy in life, mm. it does not matter how much money you have in the bank. Money can't buy you joy. Right. Work out, Rick. Work out. Work out. Wow. If you're not satisfied with you, we gotta pray. Yes. Because when you come into the house of God and you experience the presence of God and have no joy after you leave the presence of God. You need to get to the parking lot and come. Oh, if you feel in the same way going out as you did when you came in here, and you get to the foyer and you feel in the same, you need to say, wait a minute, that's that's some listen, I need some joy, cause I ain't I done been with God and I still don't feel. When you worship God, mm -hmm. you ought to feel it. I didn't ask you if you know when do you feel it. Mm -hmm. When I asked if you hurt, do you feel it? You ought to feel it. God, we want you to restore our joy. Mm -hmm. God brought y'all from over there to over here. You ought to come in here moonwalking and put the hall of shake <laughs> Yes. I mean, really, have y'all looked at what you got? I mean, I mean, have you really just how do you have TV lights and cameras and bathrooms and closets? Showers, mm. soccer field, mm. softball field, elevators. Some of my members, y'all need some hover rounds. I got some cripple members. Oh, I didn't need a hover around. You just catch your breath and hover on over here when you catch your breath. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we can become so used to something. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's, it's not. I mean, this is some. This is some good stuff right here. I mean, you, you just ought to be just, you know, just take your breath away every time you walk in. Because it's really not, y'all know it ain't about y'all, don't you? I just thought I'd let you know. Mm -hmm. You got good credit. Oh, I care about your credit for good credit. They got a building like this. Your credit ain't that good, ain't it? Mm -hmm. It's because you found a favor of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. There are 
are some things we're getting ready to go that God does for his name's sake. He brought you here mm -hmm. so his name could be manifest. Mm -hmm. It's not about you. It's about him. I think I told y'all this story when I was the last time. I can't remember. But I know who's 15 now. She, she, she went to school and she, uh, they, they, they had a movie. And, and I went to, I went to dad's, go to the movie, go on school trips and this so I went to the movie, saw a movie, and after movie, gave her a hug, gave her a kiss, she got on the bus, went back to school, I said, you need it? They said, well, I'm fine. And I get back to the office, drive across town, go to the office. As soon as I get to the office and sit down, she calls. I said, she's back, she's in. She said, I, I don't have any lunch money. So, I just spent an hour and 20 minutes with you, asked you if you needed anything, I done drove all the way from town. Mm -hmm. Now you want me to drive all the way back across that? She said, that's all right, don't, don't worry about it. I, I won't eat. So I hung up the phone. Mm -hmm. I told you, I mean, Psh. So I hung up the phone, I sat there for about three seconds. I said, let me go. Let me go take this girl some lunch. Mm -hmm. So I called her down to the office. I said, Jim, come down. So she walked and she said, oh yeah. I said, well, I said, here's your lunch money. She said, no, Dad. She said, uh, I told you, that's all I would need. And, and you know, folk got your cameras and stuff, so you can't, <laughs> you can't do it, say what, you know. What you, so, so I got real close to what, what they could pick me up. Mm -hmm. I said, listen, take this money and eat and we can hold on beach. <laughs> what she didn't understand, I didn't bring her lunch money because she was going to starve in this school lunch and you ain't going to die. Mm -hmm. I brought her lunch money because I didn't want everybody else to be sitting there eating and she not eating. Because mm -hmm. they weren't going to talk about her. They were gonna talk about me. Mm -hmm. So I had to explain to her, I don't care nothing about you missing lunch. I miss lunch all you want to. It ain't about you, it's about me. Why, my name is on the line. I don't want folk talking about me cause my baby ain't eat. See, that's why God, there's some things that God does not because of who you are, but because of who he is. That's why it says for my name's sake, there's a blessing that you got right mm -hmm. now. Northside, we've had a wonderful time. 
fellowship with our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. But we got to come together as people of God. Mm -hmm. Unite and lift our hands together to tear down the stronghold of Satan. God can't use a bunch of sad, distorted, down people. Talk about how good he is. You go to work tomorrow, folk talking about what kind of worship service they had. We're some of the worst advertisements for God there's ever been. Won't you come by and visit me at my church? You know, we just move into a new building somewhere over there off Greece, some one of them rolls over there. Get a chance, come by and see us. We we have really exciting services over there. You see, I preach on. I, I, I think he on TV three, chapter seven, three, one of just you know just come by. But you know we got the truth over there. How do you spell truth? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Bad preaching. <laughs> In other words, don't try to sell something you're not using yourself. Man. If you're going to tell for oh God is good, you ought to tell it like he's good. Mm -hmm. If you're going to tell for oh, you got the truth, you ought to act like you got the truth. If you're going to tell for oh, you serve a mighty and powerful God, you ought to act like you serve a mighty and powerful God. When you go talk to them, shine your shoes. I don't care if it ain't but the little pad you got. Shine up that old pad you got. In other words, show that God has been good to you. I ain't mm -hmm. got but one suit. Yeah, but you can keep that one clean. In other words, you show people that God is blessing you mm -hmm. physically, spiritually, morally, and emotionally. Mm-hmm. We're advertising for God. We're ambassadors of Christ. Let's get our joy back right now because we got to fight the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. Satan is not going to hold back and we can't hold back. We got to get ready to fight. Right. Like warriors, kings, and queens. We're children of God. And we're already victorious. We just got to stay in the game. Until the buzzer sounds. Come right now. We've got to say, sing a song of encouragement. There's not a friend like, like the holy Jesus.
That's the kind of preaching it takes to move the church to the next level in the new millennium. We have to quit coming here being all pretentious and hypocritical. We've got to be real when it comes to the word of God. Yes. Let's give him another love deposit. Mm -hmm.